Okay, I'm going to jump ahead here with some of this forest pack stuff and show you what I've ended up with. So this is a more advanced model that's available to you guys. And the planters, you can see, have a forest pack object going on in them with some parts cut out of it because it was too heavy. Let's just look at what that is. It's got the lilac and a crepe myrtle all jammed in there in a nice scatter in solid, meant to look kind of like, like low ground cover shrubs. So I'm kind of cheating it because that's not really what those objects look like. But with scatter, you can kind of do that kind of thing. But then the, the scatter I really wanted to focus on here is these leaves, which is another preset that I've adjusted. So if you go to the library, you can see that there's a bunch of leaves. Okay, I forget which one I grabbed here, but one any of these leaves will do just fine. And I applied it to this entire rectangle here. And I actually put a rectangle that matches the surface of this thing perfectly and then turned it off and put the scatter onto that so that I don't get anything weird going on like at these rails or anything like that because those are part of the same object. So I just made a simplified object and scattered it on that. So we applied it to that rectangle and then we've got two different kinds of leaves going on here. This represents the probability of when each one of those shows up. The important thing that I did here was go to the areas and adjust the density. Okay, so I put it to include four feet. And then also, let's see what we have for our distribution. Keep in mind that you can have a max density here. Okay, so that's five million. And then, okay, so here's the distribution. It's just these patches. Okay, so remember you can go here and pick anything you want and it will look basically like that. So it's distributing in patches. And then on the area, we're going to the density and we've got it set so that it's kind of a reverse density. So if I put this up, you'll get those solid patches. If I put it down, you'll get a lot less leaves and it's mostly towards the edges. So that's what I want because when the wind blows through here, obviously it'll push the leaves towards the edge of this little track area, right? So that's what we want for that. So in the middle, there isn't a lot of leaves. So it's got the patch being applied and also this curve being applied. If we put this up to or down to two feet, you'd see that it would really hug the edges only like that. So it's clumping around the edges. So that looks actually pretty good right there. So you can see that really with this Forest Pack Pro, you can really do a lot of cool things and make it really unique. So it doesn't involve a lot of manual placing of things. You can use the Forest Pack Pro to make it look quite random and quite nice. Now you'll notice that on these sidewalks and things there isn't any leaves. So what we could do is maybe place those manually so I can show you some ways to do that. And we'll do that outside of the context of Forest Pack Pro. I'll show you some other techniques that can help with those kind of things. Okay, if you have a nice leaf uh, model then you can use it here and we're gonna what we're gonna do is paint that leaf around our scene okay so first you need a leaf I don't have one in this scene so I'm just gonna show you how to create one real quick you could also this would be a great opportunity to download some download something cool from mega scans like trash or pebbles or leaves or twigs and just paint those around at specific spots in your scene I'm gonna quickly make a little leaf here by just taking a face applying a map to it then we'll use our handy swift loop again, put a few loops in here, then I'll just make this leaf. And what you would do ideally is make a couple different leaves with slight variations in color. Let's see here, I will need to make sure that preserve UVs is on right there. A couple different variations in color and size and shape and all those kind of things. And then you can copy around some really random looking leaves. For demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna do something very simple here. So leaf kind of like that works great. We'll take this center, actually, take this center and just uh, move it down. Let's isolate it. Okay, so take the center, move it down. Give it a little bend in there, something like that. Okay, we've now got our little leaf here. Maybe put one turbo smooth on it. Okay, fine. So there's a leaf. Needs some more bend in it. 
putting an FFD modifier on it to do a bend this way. Something like that. And then we'll just convert it all back to edit poly. Make sure we can go to the effect, or we go to this tab here and go to effect pivot only. Make sure the pivot goes to there. And then get it laying flat on the ground like that. Okay, now we have a leaf, a nice leaf. A photo scanned one would be better because it would have decay and all that stuff. It would look super real. But this will have to do for now. Okay, let's unisolate. Make sure our scale is right. Now, let's get into the painting. We've got our little leaf. Now let's paint some into this corner right here because obviously you could easily get some leaves gathered up along this little wall here. So let's try that. Okay, with this leaf selected, you can go to your ribbon. If your ribbon's not on, then you can right click on any menu and make sure that it is turned on. Okay, that's what it looks like off. You can make sure it's on right here. Boom. Okay. Inside here, there's different tabs. One of them is object paint. Okay. And if you select this thing, paint with selected object, then it'll now allow us to paint with that leaf that we have selected, right? Very easy. And it paints onto whatever geometry we go over. Okay. That didn't look too good, but it shows you what we're trying to do. Okay, this is a demonstration where it shows how it will paint on everything that you go over. You can also paint on a selected object. Okay, for now we're just going to leave it as is. You can adjust the spacing here. So let's adjust it to 2. Now everything's closer. Notice. Now the important thing is going to be the transforms here. Okay, a couple other settings we want to look at here. The transforms, if you drop this down and hit random for the Z, that's going to be good because now it will rotate all in random directions around that Z up axis. Okay, so that's good. Don't really want to rotate around these other axes. If you put this to 20 on the Y, now they're all rotated kind of the wrong direction. Okay, we don't really want it rotating down into the ground, right? So let's put that back to zero. Over here we have the paint objects and you can actually make it paint on painted objects and so now it will paint on itself. So if you let up, it will now paint and build up like piles of leaves. Okay, And you can see my scale is getting randomized now a little bit too. That's because I turned on this here. Okay, the unif This is the uniform scale button. We want it to score scale uniformly, but on this drop down we can do it even random or ramp we want random and then you can set the randomness so we want it to be between like 60 and 120 maybe okay so nothing too small nothing too big and we can just start painting in here paint on top of itself have to be careful around those edges and you know what? I don't like the spacing of this so far. I also don't like that it's green because when leaves fall off, they're typically going to be a little more brownish and decayed. Okay, so we can toy with these settings and uh, get them just exactly what we want. That's pretty good. Now here, let's do the settings a lot more, or the spacing a lot higher. That actually updated what I had selected. Let's do new. Okay, new paint object. Painting with the, with the spacing at 15, okay? So it almost treats these as objects that you're creating. And you can burn it in by doing that. Commit, okay? Bakes the current paint objects into the scene and remains in paint mode. Okay, now I could change the setting to back to 2 again. And it's not going to update my current object because that's already burnt in. But now my spacing will be at 2. It's like right in the corner we wanted it to over here right so you can actually still adjust this you could adjust the spacing here and it would adjust those objects you just painted because it's not burnt in yet or you can exit out and we'll get rid of it okay let's commit that okay so that's the object paint pretty handy uh, you could like I said you could go on Quixel 
download some really cool trash, some debris, some twigs, just start painting things into here. And the forest pack is great for giant areas. The painting is, is better for just some really focused areas like that. Okay, so we're getting leaves on there. Let's commit that. Let's take our spacing again up to 15. Start just painting some leaves over here. And you can even just do it by clicking, which is pretty nice. So if you just want some specific, very specifically placed leaves, let's burn that in. Now when we go to our camera view, huh, we don't see many of them because they're all too close to the camera. But there's some leaves, there's some leaves. Burn that in, put this back to two or four. Okay, so there you go. That's another way to place some uh, detail, some debris, some trash, some stuff to add to the realism of your scene. So there's forest pack for large areas and there's the object paint for smaller, more focused detailed areas.